Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now if you saw the review on the Beavis and Butthead figures that just went up, you'll know that I was going to also do a video on my comic collection. The Beavis and Butthead comics, that is. 1994 by Marvel. Absolutely awesome artwork here by Rick Parker. So this is issue number one. Direct edition. This is, uh, you know, when it first came out in 94, so it's not a re-release or a reprint, whatever you call it. It's the real deal. Scraping the jaw, scraping the jaw. Awesome. First issues are cool. Indeed they are, Sir Butthead. And uh, Butthead's getting the treatment there from the dentist. That actually looks like the frog baseball um, kind of animation cell there or whatever that they've modified to look like he's drooling like crazy. And uh, Beavis just laughing at poor old Butthead's misfortune on that one. So I'm not going to take them all out individually and show you the insides because we'd be here all day long. But trust me, they are gorgeous and funny. The artwork inside is very well done. It's not one of those ones where the front cover is great, but then you open it up and you get a bit disappointed by the quality of the artwork. The artwork inside here is fantastic. There is issue number one. You'll see that suggested for immature readers. <laughs> so $1.95 US, $2.45 Canadian. 1st of March. Well, number one March, should I say. That's not meant to be the date. That is the the fact that this is a number one for you know, however many they are. I think they made 28 in total. I have um, 11 comics, so I'm missing a few of the, the, the older ones. But to be honest, if you look, there are videos on YouTube that show you just every front cover just in succession, just showing you how they, uh, how they look. And they definitely got less thrilling to me as they went on. Uh, up till number 10, I've got all 10 here, and plus a Christmas one. Uh, which is like, uh, you'll see that in a minute, it's very nice. But they did start to get a little bit less appealing to me visually uh, as they got closer to, into the 20s, uh, those issues. But anyway, there's number one. And here's number two, which I absolutely love. I still remember the day, I was 14. I still remember the day I went into the Twilight Zone in Hounslow High Street. And uh, they had this. And I discovered them, I discovered these comics when issue two was out. But the guy who owned the place, Anise... He was a legend. He had one uh, behind the counter that he was actually intending to buy for himself. The shop owner wanted to get this for himself because it was issue number one. And it was his last one. But it was so cool and he let me get it. I didn't even ask. He just said he kind of surprised me and lifted it up behind the counter and said, look what I got. And, oh man, I was 14 years old. You know, back in 94. There was a lot going on in 94, man. Nirvana were huge. Kurt Cobain, had, I think he was about to die or just died. It's really sad. I was actually buying an ice cream from an ice cream truck when I found that out. I was standing there holding my ice cream cone. and I just heard that Kurt Cobain was gone. That sucked. But, um, so this is the one that I first bought. And then, you know, like I said, a niece showed me this one. So I got these two that day. Look how clean and vibrant this one is. I love this cover man is really really cool and uh he's like cool my turn that is not a beavis impression i could do better but i just you know but, uh, you said number two look at that oh suggested for immature readers yep same price absolutely awesome artwork though check that out i love that one and i love number three. Oh, actually that's number four got them in the wrong order god damn it come back to that Burger World. I remember this one. Something about this one was quite tricky. I think I just missed it and they were sold out and then he managed to get me one in or something. But this one, I was panicking because uh, I really wanted to get issue three. Look at that. There's uh, Stuart down there. Booger World. You boys may think it's funny, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. Lovely, lovely. Well, that is awesome. Oh, man, that's on his back and everything. That is awesome. But yeah, the artwork by Rick Parker is absolutely perfect for these. Again, beautiful, bright, vibrant colors. Really catches the eye and stands out. Number three. And here we go. Number four. Love this cover. What's that there? I can't say I remember this. This comic is sick. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> absolutely awesome. Whoa. You get a big old cuddle and they're very happy. Ambushed by the American Amazons. Okay. Rick Parker again. So uh, they, they've still got the Skull and uh, Death Rock t-shirts instead of the ACDC and Metallica. Like they did in the, the cartoons, the TV show. But again, that is a really good front cover. Absolutely love that one. 
worthy of being framed. I'm just not sure um, which ones I'm going to display with the figures because I'm going to set up a lovely uh, Beavis and Butthead and Ren and Stimpy section. Uh, I've got some Ren and Stimpy figures coming very soon. I'm going to show you some comics as well. Same thing uh, that I'm doing now with Beavis and Butthead stuff, but with Ren and Stimpy. And that'll be in a few days. Oh, and uh, just in case any of you uh, are still watching this video who are interested in the uh, the joker situation i got some good news so uh, i guess a lot of you guys who are into this stuff won't be watching this video so you won't know this news but those of you who have been cool and stuck with this video even though it's not my usual kind of content god bless you for sticking around the uh joker situation has uh, brought some you know good news at last he is being picked up for me this thursday and shipped out on friday i'm assuming so I should have him pretty soon, uh, give it another two weeks max, which is a bit of, it sounds like a long time, but trust me, two weeks will fly by, and then I'll be bringing you uh, reviews and unboxings and comparisons with the big version of that by Hot Toys, the Heath Ledger Dark Knight Joker. So uh, thank you to James Irwin for that great news today. So one fourth Heath Ledger Joker figure coming real soon to the channel. Here we have issue number five. Now this one, it's never been one of my favorites. It's great again, the beautiful vibrant colors it's very clean uh, there's not much going on it's not your usual kind of comic front cover where there's just so much detail everywhere you know the blue background green grass is very very plain but you know it's effective that's what beavers and butthead is it's just, it doesn't need uh, all that detail suggested for his readers again da -da 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 -da. but yeah he's getting bonked on the head by beavers's uh, butthead's knee there and taking a tumble but yeah, not one of my favorites, but definitely obviously glad to have it. Very, very nice. Issue 5. Ah, now this is one of my favorites. Issue 6. Yeah, this was the summer issue. Came out in August. And I remember rushing to the comic shop from the basketball court that was uh, kind of up the road there a little way. And uh, all, you know, stinky and sweaty as a kid running around playing basketball like a mad person. And we suddenly remembered, oh, Beavis and Butthead's out today. So... Got my bike, rushed down to the stout, picked myself up. Issue 6, August. Marvel Comics, Blavis and Butt here. Special summer fun issue. And uh, that's just the poking in a little hole in the plastic there when I... This, um, not any damage to the comic, must stress that. See, separate. It's just I need to get a better, uh, you know, plastic cover for it. I need to frame these, really. Do frame my comics. I've got all the, um... Adam Hughes ones. I love all the Adam Hughes Catwoman covers. Absolutely amazing. I've got quite a few Predator Dark Horse comics as well. AVP, Predator Big Game. Some of my favorite uh, artwork of that stuff. But yeah, I would love to have the room to frame and display my Beavis and Butthead and my Ren and Stimpy comics. So I always loved this one. Yeah, like I said, you know, memories of uh, that day in the summer when I was uh, playing basketball with my friends and remembered this was out on that day. So I you know just rode like crazy to the shop because these always sold out quick at the twilight zone the shop where i got them so i always had to hurry um and i love their faces they crack me up like I'm, they're laughing and holding their breath at the same time gotta be careful <laughs> and that lady is uh you know they're about to play a trick on her with the shark fin so yeah, all the bubbles rising up all the little details i really like this front cover the color is very cool don't know if you just heard my tummy rumble just then but that's what's happening Number seven, and oh, I always loved this one, made me laugh. Rick Parker did amazing artwork for these, really, really spot on. Oh, it's raining, miserable, getting wet, that sucks. Pull my claw, <laughs> excellent stuff. So yeah, issue number seven. Issue number eight, October. So, wasn't quite what I was expecting for the October issue. I remember thinking it was going to be full on, like, you know, maybe they'd be wearing some kind of cool monster outfits or something. But on first glance, you wouldn't really know it's a Halloween issue. I mean, he is wearing a cape, so he's uh, super beavis, I guess. But uh, this is cool. There you go. There is a much more Halloween y uh, you know, cover coming up, which is awesome. But there is the artwork for that bit. Uh, I believe Beavis' mus uh, muscle situation is slightly lacking in prowess. Yeah. Hey, butthead, I'm like faster than a speeding train or whatever. <laughs> I 
Again, Rick Parker bringing the thunder and the lightning with the artwork on that one. Nice colours used. Very nice. But you can see, man, these front covers were just absolutely scrumptious. I love them. All right, what have we got next? Oh, yep. I remember this one. I remember walking into the shop and picking this up. I remember that moment. It's just something about certain covers or whatever. You just remember the moment you first saw them. And there's the frog. Given, uh, well, going to uh, get the fly on Butthead's nose, but missing and dashing his cheek, perhaps. Inside the winners of our lookalike contest. Oh, right. Okay. Maybe I should open that up and we should have a look at the, the lookalikes. No harm in that. Let's see. Uh, bachelorette number one. Huh? If you were like a banana and I was a monkey. What? All right. Okay. Gotcha. Would you spank me? Hey, hey. Rick Parker, once again. What's the ticket say? Uh, contestants, Beavis, and number two, Butthead. Well, the ladies seem absolutely appalled. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Look at that. Do you want to have a look at the uh, look alike contest thing inside? I'll go ahead and break it open. Have a look. Yeah. I'm good to you like that. Now, this is what I mean about how good the artwork is inside these, though. I mean, it's really. I mean, the very first thing you see, it's like top quality. Absolutely awesome. So I'm assuming the uh, lookalike contest bit will be in the back. But you can see, man, they spared no expense. They really uh, put in 110%, like a maximum effort with these Beavis and Butthead comics. I don't know about the later issues. Look at Gargoyles coming October 24th, 1994. Stopping Evil, Stone Cold. That's some cool artwork right there. I vaguely remember that. I remember that a little bit right there. But that's one of the coolest things about all these old comics. Checking out the the um, the ads, you know, different movies and games, stuff, albums. What's that? Your subscription thing, I guess. Riku. Oh, is that Doctor Strange? Hold up. <laughs> Doctor Strange over there, man. Look at that. I sense a great threat to the universe. <laughs> yeah. My man, Doctor Strizange. Oh. Told you. It's awesome. Awesome comics. Go ahead. Do some investigation if you don't know. Ah, oh, these are the ads I used to love, like checking out all the different stuff. I oh, know this is the what's this the issues or whatever. It's been a while. Anyway, you can always pause it if you want to, and I suppose you could read this stuff if you really, really wanted to. Anyway, getting close to the end of this issue. Uh, East Coast Comics, nice. X Men. Uh, da, 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 da. Again, awesome artwork. Okay, I think we got the. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I remember looking at this. So there is, I guess, the guy who won the, the Beavis one, and there's the guy who won the, the Butthead one. So that is pretty sweet right there. Got some letters to Beavis and Butthead. I'm 14, I'm a girl, and I see nothing wrong with your jokes about women. Okay, cool. Excellent. Daria. Diarrhea. And uh, Weird Science TV show. I remember her from uh, Kingpin. Woody Harrelson, Bill Murray. Awesome stuff. So, one of my favorite front covers, which is the kind of cover I would have expected for the October Halloween-ish kind of issue. This is actually uh, one that came out in December. So, Confusion.com, uh, issue 10, here we go. So, absolutely uh, one of my favorites right here. Trick or treat, dude, yeah, give us free candy. <laughs> Look at Beavis's posture, he's not messing around, he wants that candy. I always wondered about that. Unless I'm just missing something or forgotten some detail or something like that. But ain't you two boys from whacking off in my tool shed? All direct editions. I love this one, man. Absolutely love it. 
So, I mean, that's cool. Even though the figures don't have the official uh, Metallica and ACDC on the T-shirts, it is in line with the comics that are going to be displayed behind the figures. So these comics are going to be with the figures and it will match up uh, what it says on the T-shirts. So there won't be any inconsistencies there. So that, uh, that gets me quite happy. Anyway, that's one of my favorites. Absolutely love that one. This comic is a treat. And then the last one I have, I skipped an issue. I didn't get issue 11. See, I've got 1 to 10, and then it jumps to number 12, which came out in February. Which, again, a very Christmassy front cover came out in February, and the very Halloween-y kind of front cover came out in December. Very strange. Whatever. But um, I love this one. I must have skipped issue 11 because I didn't like the front cover. I'm sure that's the reason, because I would have seen it. You know, I was going into that Twilight Zone shop all the time. Uh, around the time that these were coming out so i would have seen issue 11 but for some reason i didn't get it so i mustn't have liked the front cover um in fact i remember now which one it was it was uh, there was a turkey and they were dressed up i've seen it recently on youtube and i was checked out a video uh, so i just don't think i was too keen on that particular front cover um so i stopped at like number 10 but then when i saw issue 12 i was like oh i gotta get issue 12 because obviously that is just awesome as far as front covers go so there you go. Uh, my chest notes are like roasting on an open fire. <laughs> Alright folks, thanks for watching and leave me a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed the video or not. And I will be back with you. We've done the figure reviews now. We've done the comic reviews. And next video will be the Beavis and Butthead trading card collection. And there's a lot of them there absolutely hilarious so that'll be the next one keep it locked subscribe hit the bell icon check me out on instagram and facebook at dnight free free you can click the link under the video and check out my patreon page if you want to help support the channel thank you very much for all your support on the videos and all the interactions likes comments messages all that stuff it's always fun talking to you guys good to know you're out there watching the content all right see you soon take it easy bye bye